today we are going to visit Chateau Beau Séjour Beco, which is an amazing property located right on the limestone plateau of Saint Emilion. And it's still a family owned property. So it's been going from generation to generation. Emily, our host, will tell you everything about the winery. Fantastic. Happy to welcome you to show you. Yeah, so good to be here again. I, I propose you first to have a, a little look about the vineyard. Yeah, let's the base go. Of our work. Yeah. Perfect. And Vegetal is particularly. Uh... So this is a uh, Merlot. Merlot vines. And when was it planted, this one? Uh, this year. So, so it's not even one year old. Mm -hmm. It's only a few, few months. How to recognize Merlot leaves? Do you know that? Yeah, I know, but I would like to hear mm. it again, please. <laughs> it's because of these two elephant heels, two eyes and the two heels. So yes, we have a lot of uh, imagination after a few glasses of wine. <laughs> <True. laughs> when will you start using the grapes from these vines in Chateau Bossy Ah, This is a good question. <laughs> it depends on the quality of the berries, of course. Uh, probably not before 10 years. 10 years? Mm, okay. so very long. Yeah. yeah, it's to have the top of the quality and uh, we have to be passionate. So we can't use it uh, for the main wine, but probably after a uh, few years of production, we will use it for second wine or something a little bit uh, lighter and uh, cheaper, of course, also. <laughs> so just uh, a little look about this view. Huh? This is really nice. We are on the plateau of Saint Emilion. So uh, US is in this direction, not so far. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can see so the nice village of Saint Emilion uh, with uh, the tower here. Uh, many nice neighbors also. So you can see here Cloforte, uh, our neighbors, Canon. Uh, again, many premier Grand Cru classés located on the plateau, simply because this is the best place. Um, we are not pretentious, huh? it's just the, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, again, uh, on the plateau uh, with a very specific soil. A few centimeters of, uh, of earth and uh, a big rock of limestone. We will see that later. Uh, okay. A big rock of limestone and uh, it explains this uh, freshness of uh, the saint Emilion wines. A lot of minerality comes from this uh, limestone soil. So, Emily, can you tell us a little more about uh, Chateau Beau Séjour Beco, the family and the size of the estate and all that? So, quite large huh, for Saint Emilion. Huh? Actually, we are here again, huh, very close to the, the village of Saint Emilion, and we have this uh, total surface, so a little bit more than 22 hectares, so about 50 acres, and it's again uh, quite big for, uh, for Saint Emilion. Originally, it was much smaller, it was only this small part. Uh, and this is really um, into the family because since uh, 1929. Oh. And the grandfather was an intelligent man. He bought more lands when it was also true, much cheaper. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, he really expanded the, the size of the estate. Uh, Michel is here on the family portrait, the grandfather. Uh, and you can see also um, his two sons, Gérard on the left, Dominique on top. The new generation uh, represented by Juliette in the middle. And Juliette will be the next winemaker, the ne next owner of the estate? Yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. A woman. <laughs> yeah, and you were saying that the plots now are very expensive. Do, do you have an oh, estimate yes. of how much uh, an well, acre would you, cost? You want yeah. to invest for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it's <too laughs> It's more, it's approximately around, yes, between five and seven million euros. Right. Per hectare, so you need a lot of money. Yes, <laughs> but this is not for sale. No, no okay. okay. <laughs> so now I would like to show you um, the vats, the stainless steel vats. So, Emily, can you tell us a little bit more about these vats that are so special, right? Mm -hmm. They are, and we are the first to invest. Really? Few right. years ago. Um, yes. 
and it was good. More colors, more flavors, but softer than it. Great, and how do you call that? Tronc conique inversé. Mm. So, conical, upside down, bat. <laughs> Great! Some wooden bats too, and again the classic cylindric. So, three different shapes um, to adapt the method in function of the uh, grapes we have and the quality of the berries. And why do you, how, how do you decide what goes where? Hmm. This is uh, the work of the, of the winemaker uh, and uh, it really depends on the maturity, the size of the skin, uh, the maturity of the seeds, uh, the volume of sugar, it's so technical. Oh. Hmm. And it's every year another adventure, so okay. different it can year. be every year, it can be different every year. So the wine will stay inside for the same time than if it stay in the other... Approximately, yes. yes. Okay. Great, thank you so much. So I heard that 2019 was amazing, what do you think? Yes, we are super excited by oh, that, great. by this uh, vintage, um, perfect conditions, the weather was perfect, the berries were very healthy, um, the staff was uh, again very efficient, so our 2019 uh, um, is rich of promise. Great! And when will we be able to take it? When will it be bottled? So, for the moment, we have to, uh, to wait a uh, few months again. Uh, it will be really bottled uh, uh, next May, so May 2021. Okay. And it will be on the market in about November, December, but it will be too early to yeah. drink it, so really a minimum four years, uh, four years after the bottling to start to enjoy it. Okay. And if you are in passion, you can, but use a big decanter and a big stack <laughs> to match, uh, to match uh, with the wine. No, seriously, uh, we, we, are, we have to be passionate. The wine is, looks like a little baby with a lot of energy and uh, we need to wait uh, to have a smoother aftertaste and to have a, a full and rich uh, palette of the flavors. So four years after the bottling, uh, okay, great. Thank you. So what do we have here? Our treasure. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very old bathrooms. Uh, this is the... We can call that the, li the wine library. And... Um, this is the occasion for the family to taste all the wines, to yes, learn more also about technique use in the past, about climate change, but uh, uh, again, uh, the history of uh, the property. And I see very old bottles. So what's yes. the oldest bottle? That the you oldest consume? is uh, from Beausejour, it's here, 1924. It's always um, um, an adventure to open a, a very old bottle, but it's so exciting. So you'll invite me when you open this night? Of course! Yeah, of course! <laughs> a bowl of wine. 2010. We love it. <laughs> so we have a... We keep a lot of, uh, of 2010. So we are now uh, really completely underground. Uh -huh. um, and how, how... About <laughs> five to seven uh, meters from the, the top. And so true, this is just the best conditions to keep wine with uh, the, the right temperature, right humidity, uh, and constant all year temperature, around. right? Mm. Yeah. And uh, and so it's yes, a free storage for us. And so we keep every year a small volume of our production uh -huh. uh, for long aging, and so to be able to propose these mature wines later on the market. How many bottles do you have here of 2010? It's about, yes, 15,000, uh, uh, a little bit less uh, 15, than 15,000 bottles. And we keep here a total uh, on about 40 years, uh, more than 100,000 bottles. Wow. Yeah. So, yes, so it's cute. really a special place. We are not so many chateaux huh, to have this chance. How many chateaux? Um, about 15, 15 only. So again, it's in relation with this big rock of limestone, mm -hmm. and uh, it's the rock of limestone is only um, under this uh, plateau. Okay. So again, uh, we are not so many, so it's really a chance. And when we come to visit Chateau Beausejour Beco, we can go with Emily. Yes, 
So like we check the pockets of each visitor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Book bags <laughs> allowed. <laughs> 1975. Magnums. Magnums. Mm. 